Hey, beloved, have you ever wondered if God is listening to your prayers? Or if there's something you're doing or not doing that might be affecting him answering you? Did you know that the way you forgive people can also direct, is a direct link to how your prayers are or not being answered? Today we're talking about why forgiveness is the key to answered prayer. Hi, I'm Ed Tame McGlasson with the Blessing of the Father Ministries. We help people do family better by connecting them to the love, power, and blessing of the Father. First, I'm going to answer the question of maybe some of you are thinking, is, is God really listening to my prayers? Second, we're going to talk about why he answers or doesn't answer prayers. And finally, we're going to focus on how forgiveness is the key. So let's get started, beloved. First things first. God does hear your prayers, and he loves to answer them. How do I know that? Well, here's what God told the prophet Isaiah many years ago about prayer. In chapter 65, 24, Before they call, that's you, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. God answers your prayers before you even speak them out loud. Boy, I love that. He answers you before you even call out on him. Prophet Jeremiah uh, said to, uh, God said to him one day, call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. See, the promise is that God not only hears you, but he will answer you. Is that the way your prayer life is right now? See, God wants it to be. You might be saying, well, I understand that God hears my prayer, but you, know, you don't know, I don't know that he's really going to answer me. The Bible teaches us that. He teaches that he loves to answer our prayer. See, the second thing I want to talk to you about is God answers our prayers because of what his son Jesus did for us. This is the big one. Knowing what Jesus has done for you and receiving him will change your life more than any other thing you can choose. And here's why. When God made Adam and Eve, he made them to be in direct relationship with him and to live the same holy life that God wanted, that he lived himself. Adam and Eve were made to be loved by God with 24-hour access to God. And there is not a need that Adam and Eve had that God didn't give them. God had only one rule for them to follow. Don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for in the day you eat of it, you will surely die. When Adam bit into that fruit, Something died inside of him. That day, shame separated him from the spiritual life he had been made for. The Bible tells us that in Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death. As a matter of fact, sin still causes death in our relationships with God. How about with your wife, the people you love? Sin still separates us, not only from God, but from one another. Sin separates us from God not because he pushes away, but because we choose sin over him. Isaiah says, it's your sin that has cut you off from God. Because of your sins, he has turned away, and he will not listen anymore. Isaiah 59, 2. You know the second half of Romans 3.23 that I read earlier. The first half, for the wages of sin is death. The second half is but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. See, God sent his one and only son, Jesus, so that through his sacrifice on the cross, his blood that he shed, the payment for our sins, we could be back in relationship with God again. See, when Jesus died on the cross, he died as though he were you, so that when you forgive him, beloved, you can live as though you were him. Powerful truth. So really, beloved, forgiveness is the key to answer prayer. In fact, he sent his only son so that he could help you with the one thing you needed more than anything else. Forgiveness for your sins. See, God so loved the world, the Bible says, he gave his one and only son that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have eternal life. When I heard that verse, it changed my life. And when I began to understand forgiveness, 
I felt forgiven for the first time in my life. One of the reasons that I didn't pray at those days in my life is because I didn't think God would hear me because I knew I wasn't walking with him. See, when you ask Jesus to forgive you and to enter your life, the Holy Spirit promises to come and empower you to be a new kind of person. In other words, your old life of sin that made you die in your relationship to God, just like Adam did, has been forgiven. And the new life God has made you for becomes yours. It was this gift of forgiveness that, reconcilia that brought reconciliation to you that enabled Jesus to also give you another promise that's amazing. If you pray and ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. How is that possible? Forgiveness gives you access to pray like a son or a daughter, just like Jesus did. But here's the thing. Once we have received forgiveness for ourselves, it's imperative that we share the same forgiveness with others. Listen to this quote by C.S. Lewis. To be a Christian means to forgive the inexcusable because God has forgiven the inexcusable in you. Whew. Boy, I love that. And there are some people in your life right now, do you need to still forgive? They've done that inexcusable thing? Well, the Bible tells us that when we withhold forgiveness from others, we're actually hurting ourselves and hindering God from answering our prayers. Roberto Asogoli wrote these words, Without forgiveness, life is governed by an endless cycle of resentment and retaliation. Boy, that sounds like the new service these days. Jesus always links prayer with forgiveness. Have you noticed that? Every time he taught on prayer, he also taught on forgiveness. Because forgiveness breaks the power of resentment and retaliation that can so easily dominate your heart. And when you're dominated by um, retaliation and unforgiveness, all you want to do is get even, not to ask God for him impossible things. So listen, when you forgive the inexcusable that someone has done to you, because God has forgiven the inexcusable that you have done against him, your heart will be in the right place to ask God for something big. You know, the Bible goes on and Jesus says, listen, whenever you stand praying, forgive. If you have anything against anyone, so that the Father your Father in heaven will also forgive you your sin. There it is again, forgiveness in prayer. In summary, God hears and loves to answer our prayers, beloved. Number two, God answers our prayers because of what His Son, Jesus, did for us on the cross. And number three, receiving God's gift of salvation and forgiveness is the key to answered prayer. Do you need to be forgiven today? Have you been far away from God? Maybe you need to forgive someone else who has hurt you today. Would you like the assurance that God is hearing and will answer your prayers? Would you pray with me right now? Say these words. Say, Father, right now, I receive the forgiveness that your son died for me for. I ask you, Jesus, to forgive me for those things I've done that push you away. And I ask you to come into my life. And I ask you, Jesus, to be the Savior of my heart and of my life. And I also choose right now to forgive people that have hurt me. I let go of the resentment. I let go of the bitterness because you died for them too, Jesus. And I forgive them. And I ask you, Lord, to give me the right heart towards them. So when the next time I see them, I wouldn't curse them. I would bless them. In Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, would you let us know? We would love to hear from you. If this video has blessed you, would you share it with your friends? And we got lots more on our website at blessingofthefather.com. And remember, beloved, the Father loves you and sent his Son to let you know. God bless you.